Hey lovelies, welcome to another episode of my Dinner Made Easy series. This series is all about answering the age old question, what's for dinner? Whether your reasons are ethical, economical, or environmental, we could probably all stand to eat a little less meat in our diet. And today I'm sharing three healthy but hearty meatless meals that will leave you feeling surprisingly satisfied. For my first meatless meal today, I am making a really tasty mushroom barley risotto. Now, any of you who are familiar with risotto will understand that it's a very time consuming process. So I'll be honest, we're cheating a little bit today, but we're still gonna get the same delicious results. I've got a nice hot pan happening on the stove. To that, I am going to add some butter. If you wanna keep this recipe vegan, you definitely have the option here to use some oil instead. Next, we are going to add some finely chopped leeks and some mushrooms that I've quartered. Now at first it's going to seem like a lot of veggies in your skillet, but of course both of these things will sort of shrink down, release their moisture, and end up with nice concentrated flavor after cooking. We'll season this up with some salt and pepper and then let these cook down until those leeks have turned bright green and those mushrooms have lost their moisture and are starting to become nice and golden. Then it's time to add some flavor into our pan with some minced garlic and some fresh thyme leaves, both of which I cannot get enough of in my kitchen. Then we will add our barley. If you don't wanna use barley in this recipe, you always have the option to use rice and quinoa instead. Just keep an eye out for different cooking times between them. Barley tends to take a little longer than both of those. Once that barley has hit the pan, we're going to let it cook up for a minute or two until it develops a bit of nuttiness in its flavor. Then we will add our broth. I've got a gorgeous mushroom broth that I absolutely love, but if you can't find mushroom broth, veggie broth is a great substitute. Once that mixture has come to a boil, we can reduce our heat to medium low, put the lid on our pot and let this cook away for say between 25 and 30 minutes. You'll wanna stir it regularly and always keep an eye out that there's enough liquid in your pot. And 30 short minutes later, woohoo, you have creamy, dreamy barley risotto. Look how good that looks. You can totally stop here and enjoy this as is, or if you wanna take it a step further in terms of flavor, you have the option to add some finely grated Parmesan. Now, some kinds of Parmesan do contain animal products, so if you wanna leave this out, you definitely can, or you can add a sprinkle of nutritional yeast for that same sort of cheesiness. I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of freshly chopped parsley just to brighten everything up, and it is ready to serve. Trust me, your meatless Monday never tasted so good. Next up, we are making a really tasty Mediterranean stuffed pepper casserole. Now, if you watched my freezer video a few episodes ago, you probably saw my deconstructed stuffed pepper casserole. I love this idea because it's all the awesomeness, of course, of stuffed peppers with like a third of the work. It starts with some oil heating up in a skillet on my stove, and to that, I'm going to add some diced bell peppers and some chopped zucchini. I'm going to cook those for four or five minutes until they're nice and soft, and then I'm going to add my minced garlic to my pan, let that cook up for 30 seconds or so before I add some cooked rice to my pan. This is a great way to use leftover rice, or you can just make a little extra during your Sunday meal prep, as I always do. Then I'm going to add my diced tomatoes, some chopped artichoke hearts, some Kalamata olives, and some sun-dried tomatoes, and then sprinkle it all with a little bit of Greek seasoning. Hit it with some salt and pepper and let this simmer away for maybe five minutes or so or just until the flavors have come together. So in this case, we're just going to transfer this to our casserole dish. I like to top this with just a little bit of fresh parsley. Crumble on some feta cheese and then pop it in the oven for maybe 10 minutes or so or just until that feta cheese gets nice and golden. Then, my dears, this deliciousness is ready to be devoured. I always recommend making a double or triple batch of this because it freezes really well and it's also excellent to take to work for lunch the next day. Finally, guys, I am making a really hearty chickpea masala that you are not going to be able to get enough of. I absolutely love this recipe. It may be a little labor intensive in terms of number of ingredients, but trust me, it is worth it when you end up with all of that beautiful balanced Indian flavor. This recipe starts, as many of mine do, with some oil heating up in a big pot on the stove. 
To that, we are going to add some roughly chopped red onion and some roughly chopped red bell pepper. Now, I've left these really roughly chopped because basically I'm going to be using an immersion blender to smooth all of this out after the fact. If you want to avoid the blending step, that's totally fine. Just chop everything a little smaller. I'm going to let that mixture cook away for maybe five to seven minutes. Once those onions start to caramelize just a little bit, first of all, you'll know because your kitchen will smell incredible. That means it is time to add our minced garlic, our ginger. The cool part is I just peeled the ginger and cut it into sort of larger chunks because we are going to puree this after, so it doesn't really matter what the texture is. And I'm also adding some chilies. Chilies, of course, are optional, but come on, chilies are delicious. Speaking of delicious, I've also got some chopped cilantro. Really, if you're doing Indian cooking, you should call that coriander, but let's not split hairs. Then it's time for your spices. Now I know it may seem like a lot of spices, but if you don't use them, you're definitely going to masala that flavor. First up, we've got our garam masala. Then I'm adding some ground cumin, ground coriander, some turmeric, and finally some paprika. Now for my super secret ingredient, I'm also going to be adding a few tablespoons of ground almonds. This is a great way to add a little additional richness and creaminess to your sauce, but if you don't have any on hand, you definitely can leave it out. I'll stir all of that tastiness together and then let it heat up for 30 seconds or so just until those spices reach their maximum flavor potential. Then it's time to add my liquid ingredients. So I've got some diced tomatoes happening, a little splash of vegetable broth, and some creamy, creamy coconut milk. We're gonna bring this yumminess to a simmer and then we're going to pop the lid on and let it cook away. Now, of course, as with most things in cooking, this is going to taste better the longer it cooks. But if you are pressed for time, 15 minutes will do the trick. Once that sauce has been simmered to your heart's content, you can go ahead and make the decision of whether you wanna keep it chunky or blend it the way I'm going to do with an immersion blender. For safety's sake and to avoid a huge mess in your kitchen, you wanna make sure to turn the heat off and that your pot is deep enough to do this without making a huge mess. If I'm being really honest, I didn't avoid making a huge mess. It pretty much ended up everywhere. Don't say I didn't warn you. So I've gone ahead and removed some of my sauce, set it aside because I'm going to freeze it for a later date. And what I'm left with is this really beautiful, really flavorful sauce in my pan. That means it is time to add my chickpeas. I'm using canned chickpeas that have been rinsed and drained. We're gonna toss those right in. I'm also going to add some spinach. Now this is about two cups of chopped spinach. It's always good to get your green on. All you need to do is cook that for another three minutes or so or until everything is heated through and your spinach is wilted. And this tastiness is ready to be enjoyed. I like to finish it with a little bit of salt and pepper and a squeeze of lemon juice for some tartness and freshness and then serve it over a big bed of cooked basmati rice. You can't believe how packed with flavor this is and also how packed with nutrients this is. Healthy but hearty and perfect for an autumn evening. I hope you guys will give these ideas a try. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo, because of course I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, I've got a ton more dinner inspiration in my Dinner Made Easy playlist, so now that you're done watching this video, go ahead and watch some of the others. They're all really, really yummy. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, because there is lots more dinner deliciousness where this came from.